Hello everyone, welcome back again. So today we we'll start determine the critical path for the uh, for the activity on arrow. In the previous session, we have the we went through the calculation to determine the earliest time and the latest time of the network diagram, and we have learned how to get this number. So at the end of the day, we come out with this network diagram and the early start, early finish for each activity and 20 days is the total project duration. So this is the first target. The second one is determine the critical activities and the critical path. So before we determine the critical activities or how we determine the critical activities, we need first to calculate what we call it float to the activity. So what is a float? A float, it tells you the flexibility of the activity. The number of days an activity can be delayed or extended without affecting the total project duration. Uh, for each activity, as we discussed before, is represented by arrow, the name is at the top, the duration is at the bottom, and we have L start, and early finish, we have late start and late finish. This is the two boxes that we have already calculated. So for each activity on the in the network here, it must have early start, early finish, late start, and late finish. So the first thing we need to calculate the float. What is the float? The float is the number of days an activity can be delayed or extended without affecting the total project duration. In other words, how many days there, there are flexibility for each activity. So if we have activity A, uh, the low, the float of activity A, we have these functions. How to calculate it? It can be calculated by the late finish minus the early start minus the duration. So the float is the late finish minus early start minus the duration. So it will be something, the, this one 10, which is the late finish, minus L start minus the duration. So for activity A, late finish is 10 minus zero minus two days, which would be eight. So what is eight? Eight, we have eight days flexibility for activity A. So activity A, it can be delayed up to eight days without affecting the total project duration. So we can be delayed up to Eight, if we delay five, six, seven, we still finish at day 20. The project still can finish at day 20. So any single day after the maximum number, the maximum flow, the flexibility, then it will start affect the total project duration. So for activity A, it needs two days, but it can be delayed up to eight days extra flexible without affecting any uh, any of the project duration. Uh, but any this is the maximum number. Any single day after eight days delay, then it will start affect the total project duration. So this is the float for each activity. And here, if we want to present it in in a, in a way that for, for you to understand what we mean by float. This is for activity A. Activity A needs two days. So this is the early start, early finish. This is the late start and late finish. So activity A can start at day zero. It needs only two days, but the maximum time that the activity must finish is at day 10. So here, early start, if it's if it start early, it needs two days, so it will finish early. If it start at day zero and it needs just only two days, then it will finish at day two. This is early finish. This is what we mean, earliest time. This is the earliest time it can start. If it start early, it would need two days. So this is the earliest finish. And the latest finish here, this is the latest time, 10. This is the latest time an activity can be finished. And this is, it's, the activity should not exceed this line at day 10. Any uh, if the activity can start here and finish here, it can also start here and finish here. So it can float. It can start and end between this uh, this time, between 2 and 10. There is float. This is why we call it float, flexibility. It can start here, finish here. It can start at day, for example, it can start at day 3, 
and finish at day five. It needs just two days. So this is an flexibility. This is what we mean by load. And here is the latest time an activity can start. And it should be, this is the maximum 10. So it needs two days. So it should start at eight. It should start. This is the latest time an activity can start because it needs two days. So it will finish directly on the border. After this one, then it will start affecting the total project duration. So float, how we get this formula? It's simply, since this is the float, how to calculate this is the float, the number, flexibility, the activity can be float. It will be how, how to determine this one or calculate. It will be this one minus this one. It gives you the whole area minus the duration. So this one minus this minus the duration, it will have, this is the extra, this is the float. It will be the same here. Let finish minus L start minus the duration is the same. Let finish minus L start minus the duration. It gives us the load of the activity. So this is what we mean by load or flexibility of the project. Now, we need to apply this formula for all the activities in the network diagram. We need to know how many days, what is the flow, the flexibility of each activity. Critical activity, in order to know the critical activity. Critical activity that has load zero. So what is a critical activity? Critical activity is an activity that has zero float. It has no flexible there is no flexibility. It has zero days flexibility. It means any single day delay, it will directly affect the whole project duration. In, in which there is other activities can have five, six, seven, eight days flexibility without affecting the whole project. But the ac critical activities that has zero float, zero flexibility, this is what we call it critical activities. So let's start calculating the total or the float for each activity. Starting with activity A, how to calculate it? It's just simply the late, this one minus. So it will be this one minus the L start minus the duration. So it would be five minus zero, five minus five, zero. Here for activity C, seven minus five, minus two so seven minus five two two minus two zero if we come here ten minus zero minus the duration so ten minus zero ten minus three will be seven so we will continue and calculate the rest of the activities fourteen minus five nine minus uh, four will be five this is the float here sixteen minus twelve four minus two will be two uh, for this activity 16 minus seven nine minus nine zero here 12 20 minus 16 four minus the duration four which will be zero so which activity we have zero which activity has zero float we have activity a has zero float activity c has zero float Activity F has zero float and activity H has zero float. Here, activity G, it has a float of two days flexibility. Activity D, it has five days flexibility. Activity B, it has seven days flexibility. So they are not critical activities. Why? Because they have the, the, the float is not zero. We only consider the activities that has float zero. So this is A critical, C critical, F critical, H critical. So this one will be the critical path. So this is the critical path. This is A, C, F, and H. So this is what we call it since the beginning of this session and the beginning of the critical path method. This is why we call it critical path method. So in order to determine the critic, in order to reach to this step and determine the critical path for the network diagram, the first we have a list, the table that has a list of activities, has a 
predecessor, the duration, then we start to draw the network diagram, then we start to calculate the early start and early finish for all the activities, then we start to calculate the float, after calculating the float, determine the critical activities, and this is, would be the critical path. Critical path is going through the critical activities. Any activity on this path has float zero, is critical, has zero flexibility. If we can just, if I have a question, what will happen if activity C delay one day? Activity C has a float of zero. It means that it's critical. So if it delay one day, the whole project will delay one day. Activity F, if it delay one day, the whole project one day. If it two days, the whole project will delay two days. And the same goes for the critical activities. If we have another question, what will happen if activity D, if activity D delay three days? Acti what, what, what will happen if activity D delay three days? The float is five. The maximum flexibility is five days. And it's only delay three days. So we still, uh, uh, before, or the, still we didn't get the maximum float or the maximum flexibility. So nothing will happen. We still can finish on time. What will happen if activity G delay two days? Activity, if activity G delay two days, we calculate the float. We have two days maximum. So we still uh, within the float, within the number of flexibility. So we still can finish on time. Okay. What will happen if activity G delay three days? Delay three days. It has two days of flexibility. Three days. So we have one day extra and so the total project will delay only one day the same goes for activity b the maximum number or the maximum number of days and activity b can be delayed is seven days so it can delay up to seven days without affecting the total project duration what will happen if activity b delay seven days the we still can finish at day 20. But in the critical path, critical activities like A, C, F, and H, if we delay single day, the whole project will delay single day. Activity B, it delay five, six, seven days, there is no problem. So this is why we need to determine the critical activities to know where to put our efforts, that we need to make sure that these activities goes according to the plan. We don't need to have any problems happen to this activity we need to make sure that it finish on time so we need to focus and put our effort on these activities when it comes in the real in the real project on the real side so this is how we determine the critical activities based on activity on arrow arrow diagramming methods we have went through all the steps until we get the total project duration and determine the critical activity Thank you for your listening. I will see you in the following session.